Hi, this is Mike Winkler, Medical College of Georgia. One of our residents, Kevin, is with me, and we're going to do a five-minute tavern. I'm going to try to do it with instructions. So if you hold down the Alt key and uh, left mouse click, you localize on your area of interest in this uh, case, the aortic root. And if you ho hover over this little dot, left mouse hold, and rotate the axes counterclockwise and then come over here to what's now a pseudo-sagittal, hold down the little dot counterclockwise, you approximate the plane of the root up here. This is a pseudo-axial now. We'll hold down the middle mouse button and push it up forward a little bit more to show it off a little bit better. Now I'm going to come over here to region of interest growing, hit clear and reverse to clear object space. That's this 3D space up here. Put the background to gray. Now I'm going to go here, auto, full resolution, and I'm going to just grow back in the aortic uh, root without uh, you know, trying to avoid um, getting too much um, extraneous data in. And we'll just do these little clicks here on the calcium portions and then maybe um, try to find a little bit of the right uh, coronary as well. There's a little bit of it there. Oops, too much. Hit include. Um, here we've got, you know, more or less uh, what we want. I'm going to just expand the segmentation by hitting plus one there a couple times. I'm going to come here to this setting. Um, move the white slider in the pseudocolor transfer functions higher up and that exposes uh, you know the aortic root we can adjust this a little bit so that shows the aortic root the left coronary and right coronary there okay back to localizing the plane I'm going to hold down the alt key and click here on the right cusp bring it up then down here, this is the hinge point, the nadir of the attachment of the leaflet of the valve. Now I'm going to, while looking in the axial plane, left mouse hold, grab the little circle, and rotate it until the nut down here in the lower left panel, the non coronary sinus comes into view. When it's at its lowest point, I'm going to adjust my plane a little bit. I'm holding getting a crick in my neck, so I'm going to rotate the whole field of view by hovering over the bottom until that circle goes, and then a left mouse hold can kind of do the same thing over here. So to confirm we're in close to the, now we have two hinge points, the right, the non. We want to confirm that we're good for the left. I'm going to hold down the middle and the right mouse buttons together and translate back and forth until it looks like I'm at the nadir of the left hinge point. It looks like I am more or less. So then I'm going to come here to workflow and uh, from cardiac down to taver and um, then click measurement and then this landmarks thing, this little triangle and we'll go from here um, uh, this is the left, click, little L comes up. Uh, this is the right, that's the next one that's up. And then this one over here is the non. So then we get a little triangle like this, and we can click three cusp view. That's our first view for the aortic root. I'm gonna just trim this here to make it look a little bit more presentable. Um, and we'll take uh, a picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. C for a uh, picture, you can hit this little camera. That's our first picture. Okay. Um, so from here, we're going to again rotate this so that it's easier, easy to make the next couple measurements. I'm going to just roll this down a little bit until we're below the virtual basal ring left ventricular outflow tract. I'm going to come here, get this assisted uh, um, line pair tool, and do that, and then 
hold down the shift button uh, to edit this line. This is just a left mouse hold. And uh, we don't want any concavities. That's a little bit of leaflet tissue um, coming into the lumen. Okay, so here that's right in the middle of two different valves. So I feel pretty good about that. We're going to take this picture. Capture. Now, the next thing I like to do is um, come up here and get the um, sinus to contralateral commissure distances. There's the left one, the right one, and it's inner to inner. And the non coronary capture will come a couple of uh, you know, fractions of a millimeter above, and I'm holding down Alt, clicking there to center in the middle of the uh, where the valve leaflets co-apt, and then I'm going to rotate my axes so that I'm going through the interleaflet triangle between the right and the left sinuses of Valsalva as well as the origin of the left uh, coronary here. You see that? So it's hitting all three. So from this one I can get the left coronary height, which is that distance from the uh, inferior aspect of the origin of the coronary to the virtual basal ring. Uh, get the um, the annulus to sinotubular junction distance, which is always the two planes are skewed to one another, so that's the closest that the sinotubular junction gets to the annulus right there. And then this distance, which is the um, uh, from here to here, that's the um, length of the membranous septum below the virtual basal ring, and here it's only a millimeter. So we got those, and then I'm going to just go clockwise here until the right coronary comes into view, and we'll get that distance. Okay, capture, then we'll come up here above them both to uh, measure the actual sino sinotubular junction distance. This uh, takes longer explaining it while I'm doing it, but well, there, that's it more or less. Capture, then I'm going to hit reset here and hold the Alt key and kind of uh, try to find where the um, ascending aorta is the most dilated. See that, Kevin? Um, and there's a little bit of ectasia here. So we'll get this measurement, uh, assisted distance pair again, right? And capture. And then reset one more time. And then there's this silly measurement um, that isn't really, uh, um, they call it the aortoventricular angle, but it's not really one relative to another because we're measuring it off this uh, coronal image by convention. So it's not a true measurement of um, uh, the um, mid, uh, middle of the lumen of the left ventricle versus the middle of the lumen of the aortic root. It's just an approximation. Anyway, that's it. How did we do? One other thing we need to do that I forgot is this, to find the um, uh, two cusp view, which is where we overlay the right and left cusps. And that's this picture. Now we really are done. It just takes a long time to talk through it. <laughs>